Eyewitness News presents Newsmakers with your hosts, Jane Ann Bugda and Andy Mahalshek. Hello and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Andy Mahalshek. And I'm Jane Ann Bugda. The Ronald McDonald House of Danville has been part of the community for many years, providing a place of comfort for families of hospitalized children. And that house that Love built is now 40 years old. Today we'll focus on its strong support of families in difficult times and take a look towards the future. We'll introduce you to our guests. And our conversation will begin when this edition of Newsmakers returns right after this. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugged along with Andy Mahalshik. And our topic of conversation today is the Ronald McDonald House of Danville. And Andy, many people fortunately will not know the, this, the, um, what people go through when they have a child hospitalized and you know everything that's going on around them. And really it comes down to where parents and families should only have to worry about one thing, the care of their child, the comfort of their child and their families and what and and, and face the, the medical uh, procedures but also have a place of, of love and warmth and they have it in Danville. Right and that's why we're uh, joining us today are our friends from the Ronald McDonald House of Danville. Andy and I are joined by Michael Turles who is the executive director, Renee Geringer who is the director of donor relations and Molly Ungst who is the director of marketing and events and it's great to see you all we know you were here oh, a couple years ago talking about um, the house that love built and today we are going to share more good news you're marking a milestone we're looking to the future but we want to tell people about all the good things that the ronald mcdonald house of danville is a part of and a part of the community so let's begin with uh, a little history lesson tell us about the the uh, history of the ronald mcdonald house and you're marking a milestone well, we're very uh, actually humbled to be celebrating and excited our 40th anniversary this year. But it actually started back in 1974 in Philadelphia. There was an oncology doctor by the name of Dr. Audrey Evans who had a vision of helping the families that the patients of she serviced and to provide a home where they're able to take care of themselves and in turn help care with the child. At the same time, the Philadelphia Eagles owned Fred Hill had a daughter, Kim, who had cancer and they were going through the trials and tribulations that one does uh, trying to meet their medical needs and traveling great distances. So when they have learned about this wonderful idea, this vision, if you will, of a home away from home, right away they jumped on it. And Jim Murray, who was the general manager at that time, had went to McDonald's, who actually became the first um, founding mission partner, uh, the first donor, if you will, of the Ronald McDonald House. So now fast forward back to 19, up to 1981, when uh, our founding board members were seeing the same thing they were seeing back in 74 at the Philadelphia hospitals, where families were not taking care of themselves, they were traveling great distances for the medical uh, attention that their children needed. Uh, they were eating maybe not healthy and they were actually ending up in emergency rooms themselves. So our founding board members heard of the Philly program and brought it here to Danville. Fast forward a few more years later, 1983, when protocols were changing and children had a much greater outlook who were dealing with cancer. But yet, all they knew was, you know, in and out of clinics and medical terminology. So once again, our founding board members rose to the challenge and created Camp Dose, which is a safe and outdoor experience for children with cancer. Fast forward again, 2017, uh, our board members at that time in interacting with the hospital staff here at the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital had heard of the need of families who were going through the trauma, going through uh, very serious uh, repercussions with the medical uh, issues of their child. And they did, even though we're right across the parking lot, uh, they did not want to even leave the bedside of the child to be just 10 minutes away. So what we did is our, our board members at that time, uh, we established our family room, which is where we take a piece of the Royal McDonald House and put it inside uh, the hospital. So families are literally just steps away from their child's bedside and they can go for a few minutes, have some respite, grab something quick to eat, but it'd be right back by the child's bedside. So that is the, in a nutshell, um, the history of the Royal McDonald Houses, but also our own history. But really, the Ronald McDonald House and Camp really are the people. So as I reflect back, we have so many mission moments over these past 40 years that we're just humbled by. Uh, one can, comes to mind of a mother who just delivered 
It was the middle of winter, cold. It was starting to snow. She did not know of the Ronald McDonald House of Danville yet. And she was planning on sleeping in her car just to be next to her child until one of the nurses said, so, well, they made a referral for you at the Ronald McDonald House. It's right across the parking lot. Or another grandmother who, when she talked to me, uh, her, her face just lit up because her child had spent such a great time, her grandchild, excuse me, had spent such a great time at camp and her grandchild won crazy hat contest that day. Or it's the dad who was came to the family room and whose child was having very serious, going through very serious um, operation. And he asked the volunteer there when he went in, if they would just bow their head in a moment of silence and send all good thoughts to their child. And that same dad came back several hours later to hug that volunteer because their child came out and came through that very serious uh, uh, surgery. So those we have 40 years of those wonderful mission moments that we are so humbled for. Um, and that is the real, that mom, that grandmother, that dad, those are the real Ronald McDonald House in Camp Stokes uh, families. And who is the, who is the eligible, who, what kind of criteria do people have to meet to be eligible to use the Ronald McDonald House? It's actually pediatric families from age birth through age 21, but they have to be treated in the pediatric services. And we branch out to all uh, illnesses. Our main priority is pediatric oncology. Then we branch out to eye, ears, nose, and throat, throat respiratory, heart condition. Uh, so we see all different types of medical needs here in our organization. And, and for families who stay there, you know, what is available to them? Uh, you know, we have a virtual tour we want to show you. So take us through the house a little bit. Show us around. So our, uh, our house is, uh, have all the comforts of home. So picture your house, but maybe a little bit larger. We have 19 guest rooms. Uh, two of our guest rooms are actually um, what we call efficiency apartments. They're a little bit bigger, and we reserve those for our oncology families. But we have um, a very large uh, living room area. Uh, we have a beautiful sunroom area that overlooks our uh, wonderful outdoor playground. Uh, we have a dining room that can accommodate up to about 28 people uh, at one time. We have a very spacious uh, kitchen area. We actually have three different kitchen stations in our kitchen area, so very large. Um, area for people or groups uh, to come in and prepare meals or families to prepare meals at the same time. Uh, we have a fully stocked laundry room. Um, we have two uh, TV rooms, uh, one upstairs and one downstairs for our families to utilize. Uh, we have a great indoor play room uh, for the kids and the young at heart. Um, and uh, so we just have all those comforts of home we really try to make it um, a, a place uh, just like your home um, for families to utilize when they're going through such an unspeakable um, uh, situation. So we really want to we really want to make it a home away from home for them, so they don't have to think about all of those things while they're here, and that they just think about uh, the health and well-being of their child. So. It really looks inviting and comforting, without a doubt, folks. The, uh, how has the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, impacted what you folks can do at the Ron McDonald House or the McDonald family room? Huh? How, what kind of precautions do you take and how has it really been a factor? I, I can't even imagine. That, uh, like everyone else in the world these last two years, it's been a day-to-day -day change. Um, the, have struggled with providing the best possible service we can to our families because once again we're a home-like environment and we're known for being the coping mechanism that the families uh that help them deal with their child's illness so with social distancing um and trying to implement safety protocols and cleaning protocols it's been a challenge we have still remained to our core mission of providing a home away from home for families members with ill children but now we had to do it at distance. So what we did is instead of having them all come into a, a communal dining room in a communal kitchen, we had taken the additional expense and rented uh, microwaves and refrigeration units and put them in each of the guest rooms. We had developed um, shopping lists that the families fill out daily and bring them to the front office and put them in a slot. And then uh, we would, our staff would package those and. Uh, do uh, contactless deliveries. So, I mean, our staff now could really work at any grocery store. <laughs> um, we knock on the family's door and leave the boxes out, out in the hall for them. 
um, making sure everything is thoroughly cleaned, we're masked, we're maintaining social distance, but yet still trying to keep in contact with our family. So we developed, you know, different ways. We would do phone calls to their rooms. Uh, we would do note cards, just little cheery note cards saying, we're thinking of you. If you need anything, we're still at the front desk. Uh, just anything we could do to add that personal touch for the families. Um, we, you know, we had to stop, you know, tours of the house. We had to stop, uh, put a halt on our volunteer program. So our staff has been working diligently ever since COVID has started, uh, filling in those volunteer positions. And, you know, our volunteers are amazing individuals. And it gave us a new insight to all that our volunteers do do for us. And we're so grateful for them. And we're preparing a plan that where we can safely start to implement volunteers back. Um, but really, it's just been a day-to-day, -day, like every other organization, just trying to find different and unique ways to provide a safe environment, but yet still keep that home-like environment. And, and Michael, I know you mentioned, and, and Renee, and while you were saying about the families that were maybe sleeping in a car or, or you know, just, just to be near their, their children, how long is a typical stay at the Ronald McDonald House? And are you usually filled to capacity? Yes, during, during non-COVID times, we generally, we, a lot of our rooms were filled very uh, frequently. During COVID times, because we do have to do a vetting process, um, we, you know, our rooms are not filled to capacity yet because we don't have all our rooms open yet. Uh, just because we're working through an opening framework. We have 15 out of the 19 rooms opened as of yet. Um, but uh, an average day, that's funny you say that, and I, I don't smile at disrespect, but I smile because there's really no such thing as an average day for our families. Um, our families can stay anywhere from one month, or one night, excuse me, up to several months without going home. They're traveling great distances. So we have families not only from our own county, but from other states, from other countries. Um, but if you're looking for an average, I would say on an average about seven days, but there is no such thing as an average day for the families. It's whatever and where, however we can support them while their child receives the, the so desperately needed medical care at the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital. They do an amazing job at the hospital for these children. And is there, how is, it, how is this paid for? Is there a cost associated with that? And how, how is that handled for the families? So uh, there is no fee to stay here at the house. There is a suggested donation, uh, but no one is ever turned away if they're unable to make any kind of contribution or any kind of donation. So um, the suggested nightly donation is $15 a night. Uh, but like I said, no one has ever, uh, it's just a suggestion, no one has ever turned away. Uh, but thanks to um, those in our community, thanks to our uh, family of donors that we've had for 40 plus years, we're able to have the programs that we have and the house that we have and the services that we have for the families in need. And we are so grateful uh, for everybody's support over these last 40 years. Uh, we hope that can only continue the next 40 years. But um, in addition to that, we also, uh, we write grants um, and we have a number of fundraisers throughout the year um, to, to keep the house going, so. And so, Renee, Renee, if I can, I'm sorry, Jane. Go ahead. Uh, talk about the donors, if you can. I'm sure people are watching this out there. And, you know, many families are blessed not to have to have a child in a hospital, but there are so many out there, maybe in some very dark times, challenging times. What can donors do? What can people do, businesses do, if they see this? Or, you know, they've heard about Rob McDonald House for sure, but sometimes you're out of sight, out of mind. What can they do if they want to make a donation or help out financially? Sure, yeah. Um, the, easiest, the easiest way to make a donation is actually to visit our website. Um, it's www.rmhdanville.org. And right there on our website, you can make a, a safe and secure uh, donation online. Um, any amount is, is greatly appreciated. Like I said, we are so grateful um, for all of our donors that we have had. Um, new donors, our, our existing donors, uh, we have donors that have been with us 30, 40 years. So we are so grateful for their for everyone's support. And I know when you check out your Facebook page and your website, we see a lot of people that hold personal fundraisers for the Ronald McDonald House. How can someone get involved that way? We have various fundraising events throughout the year. We're, we're planning our first one for 2022. So we're hopeful that we can have those events here in the new year. Um, we also have a lot of third-party fundraisers, uh, 
and groups and families, like you mentioned, that um, fundraise for us. So we're very grateful for, for their support and for all of our um, community partners. So you can stay up to date with um, different fundraisers that we're having or upcoming events on our website or, or on Facebook or um, reach out to myself or, or Renee or Mike or any of us here at the house and, and we can you know help guide you if, if you have an idea or, or something in mind. And we have linked your website up to our website at pahomepage.com under the Newsmakers link. So you can see all of the work that they're doing, the fundraisers and um, the people that are involved in, in the Ronald McDonald House. And I know when we were talking about the house, we also mentioned briefly the family room, which is a little bit different than the Ronald McDonald House. So tell us a little bit about the family room. Uh, the family room is actually one of our newest services uh, that we started. Uh, it was constructed back in 2017, and Mike touched on it uh, very briefly there in the opening, but it is a piece of the Ronald McDonald House in the hospital setting. So it's actually located uh, in the Janet Wise Children's Hospital. It is literally steps away from your child's bedside. It's actually right down the hall from the PICU. Um, it's a one floor above the NICU, so it's a uh, very centrally located for our families in need. And most of the families um, that would use um, this area are families that cannot or, or will not leave their child's bedside, that they're in a very um, critical situation at the hospital. But the room, um, it's, it's a 1,200 square foot room, and um, it offers uh, all the comforts of the Ronald McDonald House in that setting. So there's a, there's a kitchenette area to get something to eat. Uh, there's a living room area to rest and relax. There's a quiet room. There's a, um, a small sleep room area. And then also attached to it is two sleep rooms uh, with a full uh, restroom and shower for those families that just need to catch a couple of hours of sleep and, and need to freshen up. Because again, a lot of times uh, families might be coming in at maybe two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, maybe they followed life flight in or they followed an ambulance in, something traumatic has happened. and and they'll spend um, hours, days uh, next to their child's bedside. And our hope is that their situation improves um, enough that we can get them then over here to the house and, and stay at the house uh, for as long as, as long as they need. But that family room is, is that piece of the Ronald McDonald house uh, right there in the hospital setting. So we're blessed to have opened that. That will be celebrating five years in 2022. It's amazing how quickly that time went by, but it's such a great resource that we're able to provide the family to the hospital. And, you know, just that area, you know, the family home and the Ronald McDonald House itself, you know, for families to be able to recharge and regroup and just get their thoughts together without having to worry about driving to a hotel or driving home, that's, that's, that's going to be priceless. Uh, how are the, Ronald, uh, the McDonald's restaurants involved? What role do they play in this, in this operation, this service, if, if any? Well, the McDonald's actually is our founding mission partner, if you will, our first donor to the family room. Uh, or I'm sorry, to the Ronald McDonald House overall program. And they have really set the bar, set the example for other organizations and businesses to be involved. Uh, they have provided opportunities for owner operators um, to sit on our board of directors of the different houses, uh, to have their staff volunteer, to have their staff do fundraisers within the restaurants, and actually even to invite their um, their customers to drop their coins in the box, which then are sent to the houses. Um, but just like any organization, a Ronald McDonald House cannot be supported by one uh, company. It really takes the community uh, to help financially and through volunteer support to support a Ronald McDonald House. But they really do set the example for every other business organization to show them how to help a Ronald McDonald House. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about how people can get involved through volunteer efforts and talk a little bit about your wish list. You are watching Newsmakers and uh, we're found on pahomepage.com. We're under the Newsmakers link and we are a proud recipient of three Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasting Awards for Excellence in Public Affairs Programming and a Keystone State Award for Talk Show. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back to Eyewitness Newsmakers. We are talking today about the Ronald McDonald House in Danville, of course, a place for a respite for families and who, of sick children who uh, have, are being cared for at Geisinger. Our guest today, three guests, Michael Tur Turles, the Executive Director of the Ronald McDonald House of Danville Incorporated, uh, uh, Renee Geringer, Ronald McDonald House Director of Donor Relations, and also Molly Unks, Director of Marketing and Events. Thanks 
uh, folks for being here with us today for this very special, very important topic, the Ron McDonald House of Danville. Let's, let's talk about volunteers. Michael, you talked about in, in, the, in the opening, what, kind of, what can people do if they want to volunteer and how important are they to this operation, this service? We have um, various volunteer opportunities here at the house. Um, and of course, they're, they're very important um, to us. We really appreciate all of our volunteers um, that we have throughout the year. Unfortunately, due to COVID, there aren't any volunteers in the house right now. Um, but something that can be done, we have a lot of volunteers come and cook meals for the families and, and just drop them off. Um, and we leave them here in the kitchen and the families um, enjoy them. Or, or sometimes we have groups that do a special project. Like for example, we have a group coming in a few weeks to, to decorate the outside for the holidays. So there are some different opportunities um, to volunteer, even though you can't quite come in the house yet. We're, hope, we're hoping that that'll change in the, in the near future. And do you have a wish list? Are there things that you need that you want that maybe people can help you with? We do. Um, right now we're seeing a lot of our families with little ones in the NICU. So one of our focuses right now is collecting newborn items, um, you know, different things that the families need for that. Um, and with the holidays coming up, we, we make sure all the families that are here at the house have a nice Christmas um, and gifts. And um, we really try and make Christmas morning special for the families. So we're also collecting gift cards. Um, those are really important to the parents um, just to help with some of their expenses while they're they're staying here at the house or or as they travel back home um, with their little ones so those are those are some things that we are looking for right now and there's also a wish list on our website um, that we keep updated throughout the year um, and you can also call the house and talk to the house manager and she can um, her name is Chris and she can give you some more immediate needs um, that we have here in the house right now or just some ideas you know how you can can volunteer with us. And I know uh, you have a special camp in Columbia County. I believe it's Camp Dost. Talk about that a little bit and how people can get involved in that. How does that provide, what does that provide for kids and their families? To say Camp Dost is a magical experience is not at all overselling it truly. And one really needs to experience camp to fully understand what I'm saying. But it was the vision of uh, Dr. Shaw, who's a pediatric oncologist at the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital and one of our founding board members many years ago. Protocols were changing where children with cancer were living much longer. So what they looked at was these children are hearing medical terminology this long, they are in and out of clinics, they're receiving treatment, and basically not having much of a childhood. So they ex is actually established the first cancer camp in Pennsylvania, which was Camp Dose, and was named after Dr. Shaw, to be a place where children with cancer can go have a safe outdoor experience. Doctors and nurses are at camp to assist with any medical needs, but yet to provide that safe outdoor environment. Um, and it's truly, truly, like I said, just miraculous to see these children up there um, where they're not looked at as sick children. They're looked at as children. So the idea is not, oh, these are ill children. These are children having, providing a outdoor safe fun. Um, we have our full week campers, which are five years to 18 years old. And then we have our uh, little guys who are four or five years old and have not gone through kindergarten yet. They come one afternoon and stay over to the next afternoon. And then each camper is allowed to bring a sibling uh, that helps the new campers who are coming to camp for the first time that they know someone at camp. But also, too, the siblings are um, really going through sometimes a difficult time. Uh, the sibling bond is weakened because the patient camper, Jojo, did out of the hospital. So up at camp, they get to spend time in activities with their sibling, but they get to spend time with other siblings to realize they're not as unique as, as they, you know, they thought. Uh, and there's many offshoots of our camp that we have heard over the years with, especially from parents who've newly diagnosed children. That camp was the first time they let their child out of their sight, so to speak, since they were diagnosed. And we hear many times from the parents saying, this was the first time, <clears throat> excuse me, my husband and I had a, a date night, or the first time you hear where the mom went out with her friends to a movie or to lunch with her friends. 
and they found out that when their children are up at camp because they're in safe hands, they're able to regenerate themselves so that when their children come back from camp, and, once again, they get back into and the regular. Michael, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you because I want to ask you one, one final question to all three of you because we have under, I'm under a minute and a half on return. What does the future hold for the Ronald McDonald House in Danville? Well, there's unfortunately not going to be um, any less sick children, unfortunately. We would like to have that. But unfortunately, um, children are going to continue to get sick. So we're going to still be here. We've been here for 40 years providing love, hope, and caring for these children. And we're going to be here with the blessing of our donors the next 40 years and beyond to support them in, in the ways that they need to be supported. And um, Michael, Renee, and Molly, we want to thank you for your work and your incredible staff for what they do and the volunteers. And we want to remind everyone that we have information on today's show on pahomepage.com or under the Newsmakers link. Thank you for what you do and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And uh, for Andy Mahalshik and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Jane Ambugda. We thank you for making Newsmakers part of your day and we'll talk to you next time.